Okay, thank you very much, Thomas, and as well as Keith. I think you guys have uh, already gotten a lot of information. Huh? Now my turn to give you the final closing. Can I just have a show of hands? How many of you think that you have already gained some uh, knowledge today? Uh, only that few. So the rest never. So you all were not listening. Okay. Can I have a show of hands? How many of you are first time property buyer? First time. First time. Come on, don't be shy. I can see a lot of first time. First time, first time. Okay. How many of you got a HTB flat today and you want to upgrade one? Okay. Then the rest is what? The rest, uh, you see, that's why uh, as a public speaker, one of the most challenging things is for people to put up their hands, you know? I got $50 I want to give. Who wants? See? Still will not happen. Okay? I still will not get everybody to put up their hands. Okay, good. Never mind. But today is not about putting hands, uh, what you call that, sessions. I just want to round up some of the things in terms of what uh, Thomas and Keith have just mentioned. You see, I think Keith has actually analyzed with you about the location and everything, right? The future, the potential. And Thomas has actually went through the TDSR and given you a very clear understanding. If you are buying EC, your existing property loan will not be counted under the TDSR calculations, right? Especially, you know, EC is not everybody can buy, you know? Now, can I just ask, uh, you know what is heart attack or not? You know what is heart attack? You know what is heart attack or not? You know? You know, right? Heart attack means the heart suddenly stop function, uh, cannot pump, right? Now, do you know that uh, every time I say this, uh, I must be careful in case got government people here. You know why? Our government people like to go around and listen to what we talk. Because we must be very careful, you know? maybe some of you here are from government. Okay, but never mind, we talk very logical things. When I ask about heart attack, it's like, they have given us a lot of heart attack over the last one and a half years. Do you agree or not? And then they love, they love Fridays. Huh? They love Fridays. You know why or not? And especially Friday at 5 p.m., they love it. They will call for a press release at, on Friday, 5 p.m. After that, everybody stop work. Uh, the whole government sector stop work. Uh. Then all of you go and kanchong, uh, go and rush, uh, go and ting, uh, go and curse and swear. See, that is what happened uh, over the last couple of years, uh, one over years. How many rounds? Can you all remember or not? How many rounds? Well, countless. Uh. And then not after the seven, eight round already, they say, no, not cooling measure, not cooling measure. We want to make sure that you don't over borrow. Okay, so please, not cooling measure, we do for your own good. Yeah, nah, it's true. Huh? So for the first timer and whether the HDB upgraders, today you are eligible to be here to buy something, to buy your future. That's why I say you are special. Because not everybody get a bite of the pie, no. Do you all know that? Not everybody, no. If you are eligible for a bite of the pie and you are not making full use of it, uh, I don't know what you are thinking, no, really. Yeah, yeah. Are you waiting for another Friday heart attack? Uh, if you are not waiting for another Friday heart attack, uh, you know, like January when they announced the ABSD and all those things, uh, there was a project somewhere in Sengkang. People queue until almost midnight. Uh, jammed the whole showroom. Hundreds of people were there to what, sign on the dotted line so that they don't have to pay the extra. See, what are the things that we are looking at right now? What can they do? They want to further make sure that you guys don't over borrow. Uh. For all you know, they may come up and say that, hey, since I EC, uh, you're enjoying a lot of benefits, no? Uh, especially the HDB upgraders. Now there's no resale levy if you buy EC, right? Maybe they say, ding, 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 hey, cannot lah. Maybe I want to impose resale levy. Then they will announce on Friday, 5 p.m., then Saturday, Sunday, you curse and swear. Monday, you come and buy, you got to impose another. 
tens of thousands of dollars to pay. Correct or not? And today, you think the TDSL, they say, oh, EC not affected? You think they will not say, oh, cannot, EC also loan, eh? also must be careful, leh. you guys, people cannot anyhow borrow, eh? wait later, huh? Any, anything happen, how, who's going to pay your loans and everything? Then they say, okay, TDSR also impose on? Wow. Then die, law, then you all start to... Wah, wah, wah. Then you know the first time, what Thomas say, one thing was true. No? How I wish my grandfather back then... Huh? Hey, I'm not that old. La. Thomas and I is only one year apart. Okay? Then you all guess. La. But I already about 20 years in the business. Half my lifetime is in real estate. And you know what? I was so glad that I bought a property so many years ago. But I see many of my friends, even up to my age, until today, they still haven't buy anything. And then you talk to, talk to them about property, they say, uh, can buy me? You know, that's why I, just now I asked, right? How many of you will buy today? Okay? Only one or two. How many of you think that they will wait? Only one or two. The rest, all not sure one. My advice to any first-timer, if you have a chance to have a first buy of a new property, whether it's a BTO or now it's a new EC, please grab the opportunity. This will be your first bucket of gold. Why I say first bucket of gold? Because in future, you want to upgrade. You need this bucket of gold as a stepping stone for the next upgrade. And for those people who are owning a HDB, uh, believe me, uh, your HDB is not going to increase any further. And if you know that HDB is not going to increase any further, and you still hold on to it, you are only every day looking at your value dropping, 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 dropping. I don't mind to tell you, no? do you know how much your HDB flat has gone up by in the last 6-7 years? How many percent has it gone up by? Do you know how many percent has it gone up by? 102 percent, no. You know, there are people still thinking, I'm waiting for price to go up. Let me draw you a simple chart. Sometime, uh, I want to openly say that as sales, uh, real estate people, we actually quite hate HDB one. Oh, but we also must love them. It's a love-hate relationship, you know. You know why, you know? You know why? If without HDB to build all the HDB flats, uh, our agent got no business. So we must love them a lot. But for them to come up with all the funny, funny things, uh, we have to hate, hate them a little bit. Uh. Because our business has to do with a lot of HDB resale and all those things. You see, a resale flat, Last time, our buyer come from where? First timer, people who are seated here. We also have people who are upgrading or downgrading. People who are seated here, correct or not? And then we also have our PRs. Then we also have our singles, those people who don't want to get married one, or the chapalang, all those things. Huh? But you see, today, HDB built a lot of BTO for the first timer, correct? Then they also want to encourage the upgrader, downgrader, if you are eligible for second buy of the new flat, go and buy BTO. Go and buy sales or balance flat. Go and buy ECs. Then now they take away our PR buyer. They say now PR, three years limit, huh? cannot buy resale flat, right? Then single now, they say, can go and buy BTO. You tell me, now, should we hate them or not? See, but my point is this, uh, my dear first-timer, the government is actually taking care of you. That's why I say you are very special. And my dear HDB upgraders, you got a good opportunity here. But if you don't see this opportunity, uh, I really don't know what to say. Though. I can talk until the cow come home. Huh? But you still refuse to put out your hands, I don't know what's going to happen, no? really. Then I'm going to give you one practical example. If you got a pen and paper and calculator, you can do a simple calculation. 
Do you know how much this plot of land was sold for? Per square foot, per plot ratio. Just now, Thomas showed, right? Okay. This plot is $317 per square foot per plot ratio. Okay? Now, you know what? Uh, everything we built, uh, there's a cost to it. Correct or not? The land it already cost $317 per square foot per plot ratio. The sand, the cement, the, the, the windows, the doors, everything also must pay money or uh, no? The construction workers from Bangladesh or where also must pay money, no? Ah, the architect, the lawyer, the bank interest, everything must pay money, no? So all these things, if you were to look, look out any other projects, ah, they will put in another $400 per square foot as construction cost. In other words, a project, if they bought the land at $317, they will actually need to spend another $400. Therefore, the whole project itself come out is $717 per square foot. And then this one haven't even add in what? No? Other costs. You mean the developer so good? Lah? Huh? Buy something built for you, then don't make money one. Lah. You find me somebody there to, or anyone, uh, go and sell chicken rice. Uh, cook the chicken rice, uh, cook the chicken, chop, 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 pay the renter, everything. After that, sell you cost. Uh. You find for me, uh, have or not? Don't have, right? So, logically speaking, this project, you go and find, you go and talk to all my salespeople, especially the blue color promenades. Uh, must, uh, must, uh. $720 to $780 per square foot, there about. Okay? To buy something that only you are eligible. Hey, not that you are rich, you can buy, no? Huh? Yeah, la, rich now open can. La. But what I'm trying to say here is this if you are really eligible, then you better think. This kind of price. Today, if this is a private condo, how much do you think you will sell? Did you all hear the news? Yishun Central, the plot sold. Huh? Sorry, uh, I want to always say about government. Uh. Okay? Sorry, I'm not WP. Uh. We say, we ever feedback, the current land bid system is actually not very good. La. Like Yishun. Recently, the plot sold for $1,077 per square foot. Compared to the second person who bid, uh, the price difference is 47%. Do you know or not? In other words, uh, because why the plot was sold for $1.4 billion, the second bid is only 900 over million. Easily like that, $500 million extra profit goes into our reserve. But this $500 million later on, how the developer will recover? Recover from who? There? You lah. Okay, uh? I don't want to talk about that. Let's talk about more logical nearby. When you drive in, do you see an empty plot? Besides, that says executive condo sites sold. Do you know how much that plot sold for? Do you know how much that plot sold for? This one, 317 uh, that one is $341 per square foot. $341 per square foot for plot ratio. So if you use the same calculation, you add another $400 per square foot. How much do you think that one will sell for? Would it be cheaper than this or more expensive than this? Tell me. Lah. That's why I say you guys are special. If you are eligible to buy something that is, you know jolly well the price is still the lowest. 
and you have a direct comparison next door that will come out very soon. Actually, you are quite guaranteed already. No? You pen down today, you sit back, relax, haven't even spent a dollar, you see your price go up already. Because just based on normal dollar to dollar, this one to this one is already 20 over dollars, 20 over dollars apart. So if you buy a thousand square feet, uh, you can calculate 20 over dollars. Yeah, don't not much, uh, but still you will be up by another 20, 30,000 already. Do you all agree? It's just that you buy HTB flat, BTO. You, the moment I say you open the door to your new flat, uh, you know what or not? Suddenly, you open the door, a lot of money falls from the sky. I mean, the new first-timer, you know. Those PHTB upgraders, you know. Today, uh, when you open the door to your new property, a windfall fall down on you. That's why I say, if you say you want to wait, I don't know what you are waiting for. Uh. You know, when anybody tell me you want to wait, uh, you know what I'll tell them or not? Okay. I ask them, how old are you? My first question, how old are you or how young are you? You are 25. Good. You want to wait how long? Five years. Good. By the time you are 30 years old, good news. You did well in your career. Your income goes up. Congratulations. You are disqualified from buying EC. Why? Why? Today, uh, fresh grads come out from university Local you, find a job, starting pay, close to ice, $3,000. You work for five years, you jump, jump, jump a few company, easily, four, five thousand, close to ice. And those who are better ones, one month, six thousand, any time. Then your couple, couple work, uh, very professional people. Exit 12,000 is any time, my friends. So you tell me you wait. La. Then the older ones, how young are you? I'm 55, I'm 50. You wait, law? You wait some more. La. The problem is, uh, you guarantee you can live up to 70 or not? No guarantee. Then, what? You want to sit on your asset for what? Later on, you close two eyes, bye-bye, uh, right? Who will fight? Who will fight? Your children will fight. La. I mean, I don't mean to offend anybody, but to us, our principle is very simple. Waiting game is not a game to play in real estate in Singapore. Okay? In Singapore, it's not a game to play. We all know Singapore is so small. We all know heart attack will come anytime one. Whether the real heart attack or the government heart attack will come on, we know. And we know there are real things for us to reference with. And we still want to wait. Let me show you one chart. Hopefully after this chart, you don't wait. Lah. <clears throat> now, why I say this chart? Lah? In fact, whole day I only got one slide. Lah. Because I don't need to do all the slides. All the slides they all do already. Okay? This is a summary of all the. Let me see. Yeah, let me close here. Okay. Now you can see. Yeah? See better. Huh? These are the land bids for condos in the last whole of 2012. Bigger, can you can see? Yeah? You can see the first one on the bottom, 16 of, 16 of uh, January 2012, Mount Vernon. The property is called Budley Ridge, $495 per square foot. If you base on another $400 construction cost, it should logically be selling about $895 per square foot. But you know how much they are selling at? 
$1,250 per square foot. Why? Because of all the other costs they have to factor in. Because of profit they have to factor in. Now then if I go on top, this is Amokyo, $789 per square foot. I never put in the Yishun one. Ah. Huh? And I never put in the one EC plot in Jurong. You know Jurong Gateway, J Gateway, 1,007, 1,008 per square foot. One day, 700 over unit all sold out. I don't know why, no. maybe people in Jurong richer, is it? Either they are richer, more money, or maybe they are too far away, they never listen to our talk. I'm not sure. Lah. But it's okay, it's okay, uh, no comment. Uh. But what I'm trying to say is this. Do you see a trend of lower land bids? That's the one question you have to ask yourself. Now then the second chart I want to show you here is this. Yeah, I don't want to frighten you. Uh. Because you know why? Today, CEA got regulation. On. We all cannot frighten buyers. One. We frighten buyers or frighten customers, uh, later they go and complain. Uh, wow, then they say, wow, you're not being professional, not ethical and all those things. But like I say, we show you facts. Uh, so whether you frighten or not, I don't know. Ma. Yeah. But you see, these facts uh, is not just simply something we make up. This heart attack is not given by us. Who give one? They all give one, ma. If you are earning $4,000 a month, okay, I just give one single income $4,000, ah, very easy. When a TDSR was introduced, today TDSR calculation is based on 3.5%, agree or not? Okay? Because current interest rate is only 1.5. So what happened? Now, before this guy, if they don't have the TDSR, if they want to, based on his income, take a loan, 80% of 400,000 property, 320,000 loan anytime. Because why? Installment only $1,105 for a 30 years loan. Furthermore, now they drop from 30 years to 25 years. But when the TDSR come about 60% of your monthly income, less all your other debts, they use 3.5% to calculate. Your loan becomes 267000 only. Of course, if you combine income, you can do your own sums. I'm just giving you a broad perspective. Huh? But I can also foresee what is going to happen next. Do you think the 1.5% interest rate today is going to stay there forever? No, right? What if the 1.5 next month become 2.5? What happens if end of the year become 3.5? You think the TDSR will remain at 60 and 3.5? Because if the TDSR still remain, then it is not in accordance to the principle of financial prudence. If this TDS now from 3.5 go up to 4.5 to 5.5 to 6.5, you look at the amount of loan, 320 drop to 267, drop to 237, drop to 212 to 190. You tell me, later on, if you still want to buy a property, if that happens, how? There's a song to it, no? This song goes like this. Dream, dreaming. You will dream. Lah. You will just dream oh, how I wish I listened to the fat guy who talked that day and go and buy one property. Now I can only can dream and dream and dream. Ah, yeah. Now I cannot buy VEC for first timer. I will go, go and settle for BTO. Then the upgrader who think, 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 think. Ah, yeah. Now I ah, cannot. Lah. Even I want to upgrade, uh, actually now I upgrade, I go and buy EC, uh, I sell my HDB, I still can keep some cash. No? Later on, if this comes about, die, no? whatever I sell off, or whatever cash I take back, 
every dollar must what? Put back to the next purchase. So that is the thing. Unless you tell me, money no problem. I don't need to take loan. Good. If money no problem, don't need to take loan. Okay? Very good. Then you know what? Then I think you are in the wrong place. I will bring you to buy something else. But of course, the developer will kill me lah if I talk like that. But what I'm trying to say, I know you are special. You are first time buying something. Your income has reached that level. See, so now it's 60. If I go on, uh, what it becomes? 50. What it becomes? 40. You look at 40%, at 3.5%, uh, your loan uh, dropped three times. No. Can you see? Can you see? Do me a favor, okay? Later on, go and talk to my blue tech people and go and talk to the bankers from whichever bank. Okay? At least do yourself one simple favor. Based on your financial status today, where do you stand? And if based on later on something change, where do you stand? Okay? This one, I hope, I'm not trying to frighten any one of you. I just want to be as real as possible because, believe me, in my 20 years career in this business, I've seen so many people regretted not buying something when they could have grabbed the opportunity. Many of my friends don't want to listen to me. If not today, they would have been millionaire and they would have retired already. Trust me. But too bad, now they all complain to me. Aya, zha zai, zha zai. You know what zha zai? In Cantonese, there's a saying. Zhou ji, zhou ji, the mo. Hat yi, hai mai. And my Cantonese is not very good, I'm a teacher. Meaning to say what? Wow, if I know earlier, uh, today I think there's no beggars on the street already. That's what it means. Uh. Don't live to regret something. Uh, that you could have seized the opportunity and quickly grab it. And furthermore, today, uh, property speculation no longer exists. Do you know that? Last time I used to tell people, there are three types of buyer in this whole market. Three types. Generally, three types. Upgrader, downgraders, migrators. What do you mean? Upgrade, downgrade, migrate. Uh. Upgraders are people who what? Who what? Has an existing property, want to upgrade? Lah, huh? Or the first timer, I consider, because first timer, huh? from no property to property, uh, means upgrade. Lah. Downgrader, same thing, big, change to small. Those people who migrate are the people who what? Sell already, take the money, go and enjoy, go iskanda, go and stay with the family members. These are called migrators. And today, we also say there are three categories. Homestay, you guys, homestay, buy to stay one. Another type, buy to invest. That means you want to buy a second property, third property to rent out one. The last type, speculators. Today, got speculators or not? Can ah, you speculate not in Singapore, you go Malaysia, ah, you go Philippines, go, go anywhere else, but not in Singapore. So, to the homeowners, I only got five words for you. You buy to stay, I got five words for you. No? What are the five words? Very simple. Do you like the house? Or do you like the property? Do you like this property? You like, eh? then don't need to talk. No. My next question, is the price correct? Is the price correct? When you stay for five years, do you make money? If you buy for investment, very simple, so uh, you may not need to like the place. But do you think this property can make money? Because investor make money most important. 
But the lucky one here is this. This property not only can stay, also can for making money. So if that, if that is achieved, uh, what else, what other concern you tell me? Lah? Okay, so I hope uh, with this little understanding, uh, I can talk on and on uh, because I scared I talk too long later, you all got no time to go and close deal. Okay, no time to issue the check. So, to sum it up, whatever Keith, whatever Thomas, whatever myself has said, our only one objective is this. Like I say, you are the lucky one because you are eligible. Okay, you don't have to suffer any of the whatever taxes or restrictions. And you are here knowing that this is the price property that is correct. Okay, reasonable, you will make money one. Then, my very last question, it will be this. Will you take action? Very simple. Okay? So with that, I close my little speech and little talk. And I hope, please, go and look for all my salespeople out there, especially the blue ones. Okay? And enjoy your buffet and have a great weekend. And please, make money already. Remember me. My name is Lim Yong Hock. My name, Chinese name is Lin Yong Fu. If you listen to radio, my nickname is called Fu Ge. Okay, Radio 1003, Radio 958, or you see me, Chawan Ni Hao. Okay, so wish you all the best and happy buying. Thank you very much. <laughs>